Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi everyone, this is Sue from 1A Auto and today we're going to be installing these Trail Ridge tow mirrors on our 2011 Silverado. These mirrors come with backup spotlights, they extend and they have the blinker inside of them. We're going to wire them up and also show you the option package to go from black to chrome. So if you need mirrors for your vehicle, click on the link in the description and head on over to 1AAuto.com. So we're going to replace these driver mirror and passenger mirror with upgraded Trail Ridge mirrors. These ones have been on for several years now and they got kind of beat up and they never hooked up the backup light. So we're going to show you how to hook up the backup spotlights and wire them in for you. We're going to use a trim tool and I'm going to pop off the cover first that protects the mounting bolts for the mirror. And that's just a quick twist and pop. You can see the clips and where they go. We'll set that aside. I'm going to move straight from right to left over for you. So this piece comes off the handle and uh, just give it a little pop hopefully. And there's your clip on the bottom, clip on the top. I'm going to move down to the inner handle here in this little trap door. I'm going to pop that open. I like to use a little pocket screwdriver. It seems to be a little bit easier. Then the handle here. We've got another cover back here. Pop that free. And the last thing is the door lock. It has a little notch. I'm going to pop that out. That doesn't come all the way out. It stays like that because it's just a clip that pushes in when we readjust it on that rod. So there is five mounting bolts for this door panel. It's a 10 millimeter socket and there's just one missing. So people have been in the door before. Not uncommon. So I'm just going to loosen these up. Take these pieces out. You have the bolts right in the place and I can set that aside. The inner door handle bolts. Like I said, they're all 10 millimeter sockets. And then two on the door handle area. I'm gonna pop up the main window switcher. This end guides in this way, so we're gonna pop it in the rear and then slide it out the front. Try not to ever break that, that clip. We're just going to dis unplug all the clips here. Sometimes it helps if you have a tool that you can push down or if you can manip manipulate it. There's your tabs. This one's a little different than the others, so it helps if you have a door trim tool to get it in there and pull up on that tab because it's going to go out this way. Now we're ready to pull up on the panel. I'm just going to tuck that in. There's also a harness right here. See the body clip right there. So I'm just going to push that through. There's pop clips around the edge so you can take a trim tool or if, see if your fingers fit in. In this case, it's been off quite a few times. Now once all the clips are pushed out, go straight up, then rest it. Now this cable has um, the housing broke, so the last person in here looks like they put a wire tie in. So we're just going to cut free that wire tie and then slide the cable out of the handle. Pair of cutting tools and just snap that wire, that tie out of the way. Let's see if I can get this on a set by flame. So that normally would clip in there, but that housing's cracked and broken. So now you're going to 
See how that cable goes into the... That snaps on that one. So the last person got real ingenious and drilled a hole here and a hole here so that they could run this tie through and hold it in there steady. And it seems to be working. So now we're going to remove the door insulation. And the reason for that is because the wires for this mirror run down through clips and into this. Uh, normally I could just pull this out and just un and run it through, but I'm going to be wiring this, so I want you guys to get a full vision of what, what's going on here. Like I said, this door panel's been off several times, probably from the last insulation. So this is the factory harness right here, and it comes with the disc plug. That this one goes to the mirror. The original, well, the aftermarket mirror that was installed a couple of years ago. We're just going to pull, pull it right through there. And undo the wire clips. Insulation foam. Set that aside. This mirror has three mounting bolts. The studs come through the door frame, and it has three 10 millimeter head nuts with washers on them. So I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket. I'm just going to loosen these up. I'm going to leave the top one on to anchor it. I'm going to take the two bottom nuts off. So before I start spinning that, I'm going to come out and support that. This door has the rain guard on it, and it's not that tricky. Just got to slide it on up and through. So I'm going to pull the bottom part out yet first. See how it just got it right up in there like that. I'm going to hold on to that, run the harness through. And now we're ready to install the new one. So I'm just gonna hang it on out here. Fish those wires right through the hole. Now I'm gonna go through the top first. Guide those studs in. And I luckily left my mounting nuts close by. <laughs> Be kind of difficult to chase them and hold this mirror at the same time. Set them all. Before I snug it, I like to take a feel and maybe look at it, make sure the trim is all lined up properly. It does have a nice little guide pin here. And I have marks from the original mirror mounting. So I'm going to go with all that, and then I can snug it right down. The uh, new harnesses come with these body clips in them, which is a nice little feature. You might have to move it around just to get it in the right spot. I know it comes needs to come down just a smidge. I can line that right up with the factory hole. Same with the bottom one. I'm going to run this right through this door protector jam. Let it come right out the other side. Now if you couldn't get it to pull all the way through, you could just loosen up these two mounting bolts, which are a 10 millimeter head. And I'm going to let that fall through. So normally I would just throw the panel back on, but right now we're going to leave this out because we're going to show you how to wire up the actual harness so that the reverse spotlight works. 
So when it comes to wiring these mirrors for these nice reverse backup lights on the mirrors, they come with this kit with all the scotch clips. And what you need to purchase are two Adafuse connectors and a couple of butt connectors. So this is the end that's gonna to connect to the harness here for the mirror operation. So this is gonna be over here freely and at the ends where they ship them to you, they have them pre-cut down here. The first thing I'm gonna do is undo the door jam factory harness. Now these are plastic clips that lock into the body and the door. They're just little tabs. So I push in with my body clip, my body tool. And you can see the, the harness is exposed. I'm gonna do the same on this side. And that way when I fish this through the door jam, get something more easier, hopefully and flexible to work with. Um, so I took the head off a wire tie and I taped it to the harness. So this way I have something firm to pull on and guide it through. So I'm gonna guide it through here and hopefully feel it flex around. This is gonna take some patience and time, but in the end it is worth it because these lights on this mirror are pretty awesome. So I started to fish my wire through and what I did was I scrunched up this harness to be as small as it could be, and like this. And I have a pair of uh, long, gooseneck needle nose so without damaging the harness I could feel it in there and I just kind of ran this through all the way through right out to the other side as you can see right there the tip just runs through then I, I, I grabbed the wire and I squeezed it and I just pulled it right out and just Took my time, gently pulled the wire up. So then I ran the harness right through. So that is the way I did it. You can try a coat hanger, wire coat hanger. You just gotta be careful not to scratch the other harness wires because you don't want water damage in the future. And I know it's a lot of wire, but we don't know the exact amount we're gonna need, so I'll cut it at the other end once I'm, I'm done and installation is, prepping is done for the installation, then I'll. So it's gonna go through the, the frame hole right here. And my hand, you can't miss it. It's a big, uh, lovely factory harness that runs right through here. There's plenty of room. My hands go right through, see? see? And it's right here on the driver's side kick panel by the e-brake. So I'm going to pull the wires right through. These wires do have to run out to the battery junction. So you want to get as much of the wires pulled through as you can. So I like to keep the wire taut. I don't want it to loop over and pinch itself when I pull on it. This is a really a, a small wiring, so it can actually break a wire internally, and then it won't work, and you'll be chasing that around for some time. So I'm gonna fish it right through here, with all the other harnesses right out. I want it to be protected. So I'm gonna actually end up taping it on the existing harness that's here. If you have wire loom, I strongly suggest using it. You wanna keep any wire that has power running through it coated because if it rubs on a metal door, you'll short the circuit out. So this is wire loom and I'm gonna run that right down inside there. You open it up, it's a split system and you just push the wires in. So anywhere that I can't secure the wires, I'm gonna leave that loom on there. And I'm gonna end up taping this right here with some electrical tape. So when putting this 
harness boot back on, the plastic connector. You want to see the plastic, the rubber guide? You want to make sure that goes right up with that. And then you're going to just wrap that plastic, the rubber, I'm sorry, around the plastic. And maybe you can use a pair of needle nose to help pull it over. You're going to go follow this process all the way around so that the seal is complete when you click it on the door. Push them back in until you hear them both click. Now you have a nice sealed harness in the door jam. So I'm going to fish the wires out into the engine cavity. By over here there's a there's a rubber weather boot that has a cable going through it. So to access that, I'm gonna pop this cover off this little wire junction box. And I'm gonna pull this down out of the way. There's a tab here and a tab here. They're identical on both sides and a pivot point. So I'm just gonna squeeze the tabs and slide it down. And then I'm gonna lift it up pay attention that this is a wiring harness and you, you really want to treat it with a little gentle hand. And, then, and now I can, ex I have exposed the uh, boot that I'm going to be using. So we're going to remove this bracket so you have a better visual with the camera of seeing the boot that I'm going to locate to pull the cable harness through. So now I'm going to guide my Harness through the rubber boot in the firewall. So now I'm out in the engine compartment and I can see where my wire had been pulled right through. So now I'm gonna finish pulling it through here. Now you can use a coat hanger or that boot is um, pretty accessible. It always helps to have someone help you too. I took the liberty to in turn inside, I took my harness and I laid it out straight so that I wouldn't bind or catch anything. I'm going to take a look in two seconds. I'm going to go back in there, make sure I'm not wrapping around the brake pedal. So it looks good in there. Nice and it's almost going all the way through. This is where I'd like to use some more wire loom or um, join it to some of the stuff that the factory had already installed. But we're only going to go up to this fuse junction box, so I'm not going to need this whole harness. But like I said earlier, you don't know how much you're going to need for the door. So use the harness that it comes with for the full length, then cut it to the, just to the length you need. Reattach the water boot to the firewall just by poking it in place there, snapping it in. Making sure I have enough wire left inside here because we're going to attach this underneath to a harness that's going to go from the passenger side and running over here so that I can connect it here for the feed. So I'm going to put this junction box back in place by putting the two round ears on the bottom right in their slot there and just pushing forward and clicking. So now I'm going to put the cover back on. Um, it gives Pretty good self-description. This goes on the top, and the round piece goes on the bottom. So this prong is gonna go right inside there, and it's gonna just snap right into place. I'm just looking for a good place to run this. You want it to be free of anything. E the e-brake pedal, your brake pedal, to do the passenger mirror and door panel, it's the same identical way as the driver's side. So I've run my wires for my new mirror, just like I did on the driver's side. I used some wire loom, I wire tied it, secured, ran it through the door jam, and I'm gonna be running it across over to the driver's side. But first I'm gonna put the door panel on and show you where to attach this to the new mirror. This is the new mirror harness. So you have a brown, blue with a white tracer. 
that comes with the harness, connect those two together if they haven't already been connected from the factory. Then your red and white tracer and black and white tracer are going to connect to the yellow and orange side of the mirror harness. You can guide the pins right up, see where the lock is, slide it in, clicks. Now this will be going into the actual harness from the factory. You see orange and white, you have orange and white wires with this. You know that that's going to be the harness. Match it up, snap it in. Now we're getting ready to put the door panel on. So now I'm going to reinstall the inside passenger handle cable and you're going to put it through the aluminum notch there, pull it tight and run it up through that little slot and then click it in place, pushing. Now I can run the wires up through the switch hole and I'm ready to mount. sure everything's in place. Make sure all the bolt holes line up. This harness goes down inside here and then you put the little piton up through the this one goes here, connects. Not as many as the driver's side because the driver's side has the mirror control and the four window control. I had previously installed the foam before I put the panel on. Now I'm going to line up each clip, all three clips and snap it into place. So now we're going to reinstall the inner handle, the forward handle, with our two bolts with the 10 millimeter socket. Then we're going to install our door handle bolt and then the two inner bolts by the armrest. So now I'm going to install the door lock plastic sleeve, so I'm going to put it down as far as I can. Two guide spots, threaded rod's going to go inside there. Bring it up so that you get the uh, proper depth. Right before it rests and hits there, I'm just going to snap it in. Now I can put the trim on the passenger side handle. You can put it in the right way. <laughs> Guide it. Let's just snap it in. Then I'm going to put the armrest slash handle one in. And the last one is the inner door handle. There's a little guide right there, so it's in the back, and then the two clips. So now that I've pulled the wire through the door jam, and I'm running it along up underneath, there's a plastic cover for the blow motor right by the passenger foot, and it runs into the center. And I'm just, I taped it up, so I ran it up and through there out of the way and up and out onto the driver's side. So here is my full harness that I installed from the driver's door out to the junction box in the engine compartment. So I'm going to cut these and that way now I can splice these two wires together to make a junction and all red wires together to make a junction. And on this case, I'm going to end up peeling these back, each one back, and using a waterproof butt connector. Let's 
just on that. And I'm gonna crimp that, yeah, crimping tool. And this is a waterproof butt connector because it's a, it's already got heat shrink wrapped around it. So I'm gonna use my little torch and I'm gonna melt those connectors together when it comes time. And that'll make a good seal. Then I'm gonna end up cleaning it up with electrical tape, tying things up with cable ties, making sure it's free from anyone kicking it. And now with all my wires connected, I can go install the fuse installers and the harness out by the junction block. And I do that last because I don't want any exposed wire once I plug it into the fuse box. I'm gonna let those hang and come back and fix those after. So now I'm in the engine compartment where I'd run those wires up through that firewall earlier. And I'm gonna open up my junction box out here in the engine. There's a lock tab, gives you an arrow. You just pull on it and pull up. Easier said than done. <laughs> oh, there's the other one. Pull up. There's a description inside. There's a diesel and a gas. This is a gas engine, so we're going to be using this panel over here for description. And I've already taken the liberty to look it over. And there's an open fuse here that runs to the trailer wires, which will already be hardwired to the factory for the backup lights. And then the other section for directionals is wired for the trailer. And this vehicle doesn't have a trailer hitch on it. So I can safely use those two plugs in this fuse box. So I have gotten my fuse taps and I've set them aside and I'm going to make sure I got plenty of harness that I can duct electrical tape it to another loom, wire loom or you know fill it with wire loom. I'm going to give it a safe cut right about here and discard this wire. Now I can join the fuse at tap wire harness to the actual harness. Now before I do any heat shrinking or finalizing, I'm going to plug everything in and make sure it works. And good news is, it's all working the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to unplug it now that we know it works. Everything's good. And you just want to heat it up in the shrink wrap. It'll melt right around it. There should be a glue inside here, so that helps seal it from water. So I'm going to fish the, wire, the loom down on the harness. Now I can reinstall the cover. Got to be a little careful with an open flame inside a vehicle and in the engine compartment. But uh, I think I have faith you already know that. Now with everything connected and ready to go, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to tie it up with electrical tape and some wire ties and make sure it's clear of everything and anything. You won't even know I was here. So now I'm going to put the driver's door panel back on and I'm just going to, once again, I like to clean this up a little. I'm going to tape this in there, make sure it's not hitting anything. And I connected, make sure you connect your 
new mirror connector harness together. The harness, the mirror harness is the factory, right from the, this is the harness from the factory. Those two connect together. And the yellow and orange connect to the black and red wire that you ran through the door. This door panel is the exact same way as the passenger. So now that we have our mirrors installed, the owner wants chrome covers. So we're gonna take off the black that it's shipped with and we're gonna install the chrome covers. On this design, there's a couple ways to do it. You could take, remove the glass and then you take four screws out of the trim panel and then you remove the plastic clips on the inside. But we found on, for the, remove the plastic, the black plastic, it's more flexible. So we go in and pop it, it comes right out. So to install the bottom piece, you just reverse the process, line those pins up on the top, snap it up in. Put it in here and work my way around. Snap that black piece off. I'm gonna put the bottom pins in, snap right in. Now you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.